Hey everyone, today on People Now, Gone with the Wind and the show Cops pulled from streaming services amid protests against police brutality and racism. The CEO of CrossFit steps down after controversial tweets. The mother of Breonna Taylor opening up about her daughter's life and plans and how she's coping with her tragic death. Also on today's show, five years after coming out, Caitlyn Jenner tells us what she's learned and what she would have done differently. Plus, you could be making somebody's day. ABC News journalist Adrian Bankert reveals your hidden superpower, how kindness can change your day and change your life. That and so much more today on People Now. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to People Now. Hope you're having a good Wednesday so far. I'm Andrew Belke. How's it going, Jeremy? Good, it's good to see you, and it's good to see you guys as well. Thanks for joining us today. There is a lot to get to. Here's what you need to know and what's trending for your Wednesday. HBO Max has announced it is temporarily removing the highly controversial film Gone with the Wind amid worldwide protests against racism and police brutality. For those who haven't seen the film, it is known for its negative depiction of black people and for glorifying slavery. In an official statement to The Hollywood Reporter, an HBO Max spokesperson says that Gone with the Wind will return to the streaming platform with a discussion of its historical context and a denouncement of its depictions. The statement continues in part, quote, Gone with the Wind is a product of its time and depicts some of the ethnic and racial prejudices that have unfortunately been commonplace in American society. These racist depictions were wrong then and they're wrong today. Gone with the Wind stars Clark Gable, Vivian Lee, and Hattie McDaniel, who became the first black person to win an Academy Award. At the time, she was seated way in the back of the theater. During her acceptance speech, she famously said, I sincerely hope I am always accredited to my race. She then left the award ceremony. It's a really lovely speech on YouTube if you want to go check it out for yourself. HBO Max's announcement comes after Paramount Network canceled their long-running reality show, Cops, also due to the protests. Yeah, this is really interesting. I feel like we're gonna see more of this moving forward and I like that they removed it and they're also gonna put some context into it and denounce a lot of the depictions. So I think it's a really good move. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's a big move. HBO Max just launched uh, two weeks ago, May 27th. So it's a pretty bold move showing that they are definitely paying attention to what's going on. And I, I like the idea of when it returns of there being some sort of content surrounding it that gives a discussion about its significance at the time and in terms of, look at that, the first ever African-American winning an Oscar for the role in that movie. So there is a lot of significance to unpack, but also to give it context for the racial overtones and things that were obviously not appropriate. So we'll see how that all plays out moving forward. CrossFit CEO Greg Glassman has resigned after receiving backlash for controversial tweets that he made on Saturday about George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement. In a statement announcing his retirement on Tuesday, Glassman writes in part, I created a rift in the CrossFit community and unintentionally hurt many of its members. Those who know me know that my sole issue is the chronic disease epidemic. I know that CrossFit is the solution to this epidemic. I cannot let my behavior stand in the way of HQ's or affiliates' missions. On Saturday, Glassman received backlash for his response to the Institute for Health Metrics and evaluation who said that racism is a public health issue. Glassman wrote back, quote, it's Floyd 19, referencing the worldwide protest that began after Floyd was killed, and of course the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. In a follow-up tweet, Glassman went on, your failed model quarantined us, and now you're going to model a solution to racism. He added, George Floyd's brutal murder sparked riots nationally. Quarantine alone is accompanied in every age and under all political regimes by an undercurrent of suspicion, distrust, and riots. Thanks. That was his tweet. Hours before Glassman's tweets, he reportedly told gym owners on a private Zoom call, quote, we're not mourning for George Floyd. I don't think me or any of my staff are. This is according to BuzzFeed News, who acquired a full recording of that meeting. A Minneapolis gym owner questioned why the brand had yet to release a statement about Floyd's death, to which Glassman responded by saying, can you tell me why I should mourn for him? Other than that, it's the white thing to do. Other than that, give me another reason. That was his quote. Glassman isn't the only one whose actions have them in hot water. MTV confirmed to People that they have cut ties with Taylor Selfridge after racially insensitive tweets from 2012 resurfaced online. The network also decided to pull Selfridge's special from airing Tuesday and says that MTV strongly condemns systemic racism and stands with those raising their voices against injustice. Vanderpump Rules is also losing a few of its stars. Bravo confirmed on Tuesday that Stassi Schroeder, Kristen Doty, Max Boyens, and Brett Capriani will not be returning to the show. Schroeder and Doty were called out by former castmate Faith Stowers for trying to falsely pin crimes on her after seeing a tabloid article about a black woman wanted for theft. Boyan's and Caprioni's exits come years after they both posted racist tweets. In the tweets, which were posted in 2012, Boyan's called the N-word his, quote, favorite word, talked about wanting to punch Asians, and called pop star Justin Bieber queer. 
Caprioni also reportedly tweeted the N-word multiple times along with the hashtag women suck. All right, babynames.com is of course a go-to source for expecting parents looking to choose a name for their new addition. And now the website is expressing support and standing in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. The popular website posted a black box that lists out dozens of names of black men and women who have died due to police brutality, or in some cases, at the hands of civilians. The homepage reads at the top, each one of these names was somebody's baby. Those names include Emmett Till, the 14-year-old boy brutally lynched in Mississippi in 1955 after being accused of offending a white woman. And Eric Garner, who died while in a chokehold by a police officer in Staten Island. Breonna Taylor, who was shot and killed in March by Louisville Metro Police Department officers in her home in Kentucky. She would have celebrated her 27th birthday on Friday, June 5th. And of course, George Floyd, whose recent death has sparked so many conversations about police brutality, racial equality, and powerful protests around the nation and the world. We're seeing a lot of companies kind of rise to the challenge and show their support for Black Lives Matter and against racial injustice on social media, and it's really great to see. And in this week's issue of People, we hear from Breonna Taylor's mother, who wants charges brought against the police officers who killed her daughter. Tamika Palmer is opening up, sharing personal details about her daughter and her life plans, she tells us that Taylor wanted to be a neonatal nurse, planned to marry her longtime boyfriend, and that the couple had even picked out a baby name before her death. Palmer says, quote, I feel like they took a part of me. She adds, this should never have to happen to anyone else again. The 26-year-old from Louisville, Kentucky, was killed after three white police officers secured a no-knock search warrant, allowing them to enter her home without warning. The attorney representing Palmer in a wrongful death lawsuit against the police officers says there was a loud banging, then the door flew off the hinges. Taylor was asleep alongside her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, who was up watching a movie. Thinking that it was a break-in, Walker fired his licensed handgun, hitting one of the officers in the thigh. The police fire back more than 20 shots, hitting Taylor with at least eight of them. The officers have yet to be charged for the incident, and Palmer hopes that will change. She also wants the use of no-knock warrants to be restricted and for all officers to wear required body cameras. Brianna Taylor's name is currently being echoed in protests across the country following the death of George Floyd, and her mother says she's glad they're saying her name. She continued, I'm so grateful for people wanting justice and just standing up and trying to be a voice for her. She's becoming a part of history. She was amazing. All right, now we switch gears to this. Take a look. I have no regrets over the last five years. In this week's issue of People, Caitlyn Jenner is celebrating five years since her transition and coming out publicly about it. Now she says her happiness is the ultimate victory. Looking back, Caitlyn says it feels like it was something that she had to do. She explains all of the turmoil is gone. I can be present today. I can just be me. But it wasn't always that way. In the issue, Caitlin reflects on what her transition was like along the way, with paparazzi pursuing her relentlessly, even threatening to release photos that would expose her before she came out. At one point, she was so low that she thought about suicide for the first time. But she told us what stopped her. Watch. After I had those thoughts, I went for this walk. I was in a big open field. And I thought to myself, you know what? In, this, in the trans community, the LGBT community, we need voices. Uh, we need, hopefully, role models in all different aspects of life, different backgrounds, different everything. But we need voices, and why would I silence my voice? Maybe I can do more by actually transitioning, living my life authentically. Obviously, I had to do it in the public eye and aid, no choice. Um, and uh, see if I can make a difference. And while she doesn't have any regrets, Caitlin did tell people there's one thing she should have done differently. In hindsight, she believes she shouldn't have talked about politics when she first came out. As a lifelong Republican, she held political views that didn't match most of the LGBTQ community and was marked controversial as a result. Since then, she says she's changed her thinking in a lot of ways. She now identifies as economically conservative and socially progressive. And she says she believes, quote, we need equality for all, regardless of who's in the White House. All right, stay with us. More from Caitlyn Jenner, including what Kendall and Kylie are saying about their dad as they celebrate Pride. 
Plus, Adrian Bankert will join us to talk about her new book. It's called Your Hidden Superpower and Why Kindness is So Important. Stick around. All right, we are so excited for this. Anderson Cooper is opening up about being a new dad in this week's first ever Pride issue of People. Anderson surprised the world back in April when he announced on his show that he had become a father to baby Wyatt Morgan. This is a dream come true for the CNN anchor. He says this, when I was 12 years old and knew I was gay and thought about my life, it always upset me because I thought I will never be able to have a kid. But now he is happily co-parenting with his former partner, Benjamin Masony. Anderson says it feels like his life has actually begun now, adding, quote, this is a new level of love. It's unlike anything I've experienced, and yet it's also very familiar and incredibly special and intimate. It's really extraordinary. Becoming a dad has also given Anderson a new perspective as he works from home, covering momentous news like the coronavirus pandemic and the national protests. He says that he feels invested in the future in a way that he wasn't before. Now he wants to make sure the world his son is growing up in is a better one. Anderson explains that he finally made the decision to have a baby when his mom died. He came to the realization that he didn't have any immediate family left which is also part of the reason he chose a surrogate instead of adopting. He says it made him sad to be the only person left from his parents' union, but he isn't ruling out adoption down the road. When asked if he's considering more kids, he says this, I need to probably sleep a little bit more and clear my head, but I think it would be great one day to have a brother or sister for Wyatt. And as far as co-parenting with his ex, Anderson explains that even though it's unconventional, he is my family. And he adds, quote, I knew what it was like growing up without a dad. If ever something happened to me, I would want Wyatt to be surrounded by love. 2020 marks the 50th anniversary of the New York City Pride March. And even though COVID-19 may have canceled the parades, it is not stopping LGBTQ Americans from showing their pride, including CNN anchor Don Lemon. In this week's issue of People, Don tells us that his first and most personal coming out moment was with his mother, Katherine Clark. Yeah, Don remembers that he and his first boyfriend, John, had broken up while they were living together in New York. And even though his mother didn't know the truth about his sexuality yet, she could sense his unhappiness all the way back home in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Louisiana. He ended up admitting to her that he was really sad about John, which prompted her to ask Don what kind of relationship they had. And he told her, quote, he was my lover. Don says that his mother told him that she had chosen to ignore rumors over the years and that she loved him unconditionally. And after learning more about his friends and his life, he says she really started to accept it. Although Don's friends and coworkers knew about his sexuality, it would be 15 years before he went public about it to the New York Times and in his memoir. He's now happily engaged to real estate exec Tim Malone as of April of last year. And Don reveals that they, alongside their poodles, do all sorts of things that he thought he would never do. Don says he wants to use this platform to help others, telling people, quote, in the wake of George Floyd's death, the gay community needs to realize that we too need to deal with our own racism. White gay males still operate from a considerable level of privilege. Stories of black gay men and black trans people are rarely elevated and heard. To hear more stories of love and acceptance from proud LGBTQ Americans, you can pick up a copy of this week's People. It's on newsstands Friday. It's been five years since Caitlyn Jenner's transition and her daughters Kendall and Kylie Jenner tell us in this week's issue of People that their dad is their hero, with Kendall explaining that when Caitlyn came out as transgender, the relationship grew. Kendall adds, she could finally be honest with me. Because of my dad's bravery, I've learned to love what I love and not be ashamed of it. Meanwhile, Kylie reveals that Caitlyn and all of her accomplishments have always been an inspiration, including winning an Olympic gold medal and getting her pilot's license. But Kylie says watching Caitlyn, quote, live out her true self has been the most inspiring of them all. Caitlin tells people she feels blessed because of how supportive her children have been. Watch this. When I was thinking of transitioning, I would not have transitioned if any one of my children said, no, you can't do that. Because I didn't want to hurt anybody in this process. I just wanted to live my life authentically. And not one child did. Uh, they were all very supportive, scared, huh, so was I, on what the public reaction was going to be. And so I took each one of them, one at a time, because I didn't want them to gang up on me. And I thought if I do it one at a time and sit them down and kind of tell them what's going on. And they were all concerned for me, um, but they were supportive. You know, Dad, if you have to do this, do it. She tells us that her daughters did have one question, though. Take a look. I remember Kendall and Kylie going, well, you know, it, what do we call you? <laughs> Great question. And, you know, within the LGBT community, well, within the trans community, um, 
uh, you know, you've got to get the pronouns right, and you've got to do this, and you've got to do that. I get it, and yes, that is important. But for me, um, uh, I had been their dad all their life. I have no problem with you calling me dad, because honestly, I'll be your dad till the day you die. Caitlin also tells people that after coming out publicly about her transition, she's learned a lot from the LGBTQ community. Watch. When I came out, honestly, I had never even met another trans person. I didn't know anything about the issues. Um, doing the show with the girls, uh, I am Kate for two seasons. Um, uh, they taught me so much and I learned so much about the community and about what's going on. At the beginning, one of the things I thought was really important was a political change. Um, we need true equality in this country, politically, and we don't have that right now. And I thought I could help out. I thought I had an in with the people in Washington, D.C., and I did. I was back there many times, you know, talking to senators, congressmen, everything about the issues. Um, and, but the environment was just so ridiculously bad. Uh, I just, about a year and a half ago, I just stopped doing that. Um, I, I couldn't, I wasn't getting the change that I wanted in Washington, D.C., which I was hoping for. I think my greatest victory, for me personally, is happiness. Yeah, I didn't have that for a long time. I had nothing but confusion in my life. Now, my life is so simple. Honestly, I just get up in the morning and be myself all day long. For more on Caitlyn Jenner, pick up this week's first ever Pride issue of People. It's on Newsstands Friday. The world needs people who are 100% real, where there are no facades and they are bringing their A-game, so to speak, in every area of life. Adrian Bankert is an Emmy award-winning correspondent that you might know from ABC News and Good Morning America. And her new book can help you excel in life. It is called Your Hidden Superpower, The Kindness That Makes You Unbeatable at Work and Connects You With Anyone. I caught up with Adrian and she shared with me exactly why it's important to be kind every day and how we can do just that. Kindness is what I believe we all are inherently when we're our best selves. You know, your kind self is your best self. It's in your DNA. It's a part of who you were born to be. But so many of us forget that. We get too busy. We get jaded. We get disappointed. We get, you know, life is not fair. And so in order to restore hope, showing kindness gives you that same runner's high, that same chemical response and the you know, endorphins and dopamine, it, it all works in your body, but at the same time, you could be making somebody's day. You don't know if you're the only one that smiled at them. You don't know if you're the only one that thought of perhaps buying them coffee in line. What I like to call this version of kindness that I wrote about is kindness 2.0, where we elevate it in society more, where, where we schedule kindness in our day, just like we would make sure we work out, make sure we go to our local coffee shop that we love to support so much. We need to make kindness more than just a random act, but intentional and part of our day-to-day -day routine. Being kind all the time isn't always easy, especially if you're personally having a bad day. Adrian told me about how she gets through tough days. Well, when I was starting off, I, I worked at a Sacramento station, an NBC station, KCRA, and somebody snapped at me at work. Someone who'd been there longer than me. You know, if you look at two of us, we look completely different, two different walks of life, and was mean. And I thought, what is wrong with you? And inside, I wanted to snap back, right? We've all been in those situations at work and in life. And something told me, just keep your mouth shut, don't say anything. Well, I found out later that their mother had died the night before. Hmm. And that colored every other confrontational or tough situation for me. I knew that if somebody was being aggressive or mean, that it was highly likely that something happened in their life. Yeah, that something else was there behind the curtain that maybe you don't know about. When it comes to moments of intensity, and, and talk about that at maybe a broader level, when mm -hmm. you're dealing with just the bad day yourself, Finding yeah. kindness in those moments would really be difficult. Do you have a step-by-step -step or an easy tip or something that you've kind of instituted to, all right, I'm gonna be kind, even though this is the worst day ever? Absolutely. 
First, I talk about being kind to yourself. And one of the things that I started doing right as I started writing the book was to announce to myself, this is the best day ever. I am the happiest girl in the world. I mean, I would say it out loud. See, you're smiling. It works for you too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just picturing myself like wanting to punch myself for saying it out loud on that day. <laughs> like, oh, right. This is the best day ever, you know? <laughs> you're smiling just saying it. You can't help. I'm telling you, there's something that happens when you declare what you want, you narrate your own story. So I would say this is the best day ever because the thought occurred to me, what would you do, Adrian, if everything was working out for you? And I thought, well, I'd be jumping up and down. I'd be the happiest girl in the world. I mean, I literally thought that way. So every day when I'm having a tough day, I'm like, nope, this is the best day ever. And even if I have to grip my teeth with saying it, that's number one, give yourself your own pep talk. That's kindness to yourself. The other thing is to Venmo somebody 10 bucks, and say, hey, coffee's on me. A lot of us can't see the people we normally interact with anymore. It's bizarre. I started doing that because one of the people that works with me, she adopted members of her community. Really, they were friends who were across the country who were laid off and furloughed because of the pandemic. She and a group of friends ended up buying groceries for three of their friends who were laid off and furloughed for a month. And I thought, you know what? We all need to adopt each other. Call someone that you work with that you don't see every day, but you might have their phone number because of a past project and just give them a pep talk for five minutes. You initiating kindness creates that fuel that drives you to actually have a better day. As an award-winning journalist, Adrienne crosses paths with quite a few celebrities. She opened up to me about which of them were the kindest and left the biggest impact on her. Kobe Bryant. Uh, actually, I had the chance to sit down with him and one of the stories he shared when I asked him, what is the greatest lesson you've learned in your MBA career? And he said it was a lesson in self-acceptance, compassion and empathy. And he talked about relating to his teammates and how at one point in his career, he was all about business. But then as he grew older, as he had kids, he realized I need to hear my teammates out. I need to know what they're going through. I need to listen to them. And I thought that was really remarkable. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is another one. Empathy has been a big part of his life. If you Google Ryan Reynolds and empathy, it comes up more than half a million times. Uh, his wife was a big part of instituting that into their family, into their day-to-day -day life. It's helped him. He mentioned it recently in a virtual commencement speech to his high school. And he says it took him further than anything else he's done in his career and in his satisfaction. And I just thought that was really cool that people would stop to give kindness and empathy the credit that it deserves in society. But I mean, from Dwayne Johnson, who didn't make it in the book, but just is one of the nicest guys on the planet. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Hart was extremely kind. Um, Kristen Bell, I, I broke the ice with her because a big gnat was flying in our interview. And I said, I, I have some essential oil for you so that the bug doesn't land on you during our interview. And she's like, <laughs> I'm gonna send you some of our baby bug spray from Hello Bello and she had somebody ship it to me. <laughs> and it became a great way for us to connect over something so, you know, again, you said, you know, basic, but we're all in this together in different ways. And yeah. there are things that are universal and kindness is one of them. To learn more about how kindness can positively affect your everyday life and how it helped launch her career, be sure to pick up Adrian Bankert's book, Your Hidden Superpower. It is available right now. All right, coming up tomorrow, Josh Gad is sharing how he's talking to his kids about racial injustice and police brutality. Plus, we are chatting with the whole cast of The King of Staten Island ahead of the film's release this week. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and healthy. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, guys.